recording. The objectives of this lecture are to introduce the passive electrical circuit elements. We are not going to deal with active elements like transistors, uh, diodes, etc. Just uh, capacitors, resistors and inductors. Introduce the basic circuit laws, uh, solve circuits for governing differential equations. Uh, so when, when I say solve circuits for governing differential equations, we'll apply, we'll look at applications of Kirchhoff's voltage laws. This is one of the basic circuit laws and um, we'll look at RC circuit and RLC circuit. And also we'll look at application of Norton's current law. Uh, for this, we'll look at a, a two loop RC circuit with a current source. And let's look at electrical circuit elements. So you can have a voltage source uh, denoted by like the symbol here there's a plus and minus if you have a plus and minus this is a DC voltage source uh, this gives the potential uh, you can also have a current source current source is uh, gives you uh, current as opposed to voltage and the arrow here indicates the direction of the current uh, again if you have an arrow that implies that this is a DC current source um, if you don't have this plus and minus or this arrow that means that this current source is a variable it's a function of time and it can flip directions and magnitude and therefore it, it can be construed as an AC current or voltage source you have uh, resistors resistors uh, dis dissipate energy in an electrical circuit so if there's a potential uh, drop across the resistors VR R is called the resistance of the resistor and the current to the resistor is IR, then you have Ohm's law that gives the relationship between these three quantities. Voltage drop across the resistor VR equal to current through the resistor IR times the resistance. Um, this is valid for a very simple model of the resistor. Um, this is a linear model. You can also have more complicated nonlinear models, which we will not deal in this uh, course. Uh, capacitors uh, store energy. Um, once again, uh, VC is the this is the this is the symbol for a capacitor if vc is the potential drop across the capacitor and ic is the current through the capacitor uh, c is called the capacitance and you have this relationship vc is given by q divided by c q is the charge in the capacitor the charge in the capacitor is nothing but the integral of the current uh, through the through the capacitor with respect to time divided by uh, the capacitance um, and also you can uh, rewrite this equation by differentiating VC so dVC by dt the rate of change of voltage across the capacitor is equal to d by dt of this quantity but C is a constant so it's dq by dt dq by dt is nothing but current to the capacitor the capacitance is given by epsilon A divided by d where A is the area of the plate of the capacitor d is the distance between the two parallel plates and epsilon is the permittivity of whatever uh, insulator is in between the two uh, plates. Usually it is air, but you could have other uh, material in between there. Now you also have inductors. Um, inductors uh, have uh, inductance. Um, this potential drop VL across the inductor and IL is the current to the inductor. Um, there's a relationship which relates all these three quantities. The potential drop across the inductor is L times rate of change of current through the inductor. Uh, now you can rewrite this equation in another form. You can write integral if you integrate this both these equations both left and right hand side you can get integral of the potential drop of the, across the resistor with respect to time is nothing but L times current to the inductor. Um, now if you put resistors in series you can find the equivalent resistance like so and the, the way to solve that is fairly simple. Now I is the current through the resistor uh, for both here and here. So you can write potential drop from here to here is potential drop across this resistor plus potential drop across this resistor. That should be the same potential drop across the equivalent resistor. You just substitute what Vr is in terms of I and R1. Vr2 is in terms of I and R2. You can write this equation, write the same equation on this side and equate the two to get R equivalent equal to R1 plus R2. So if you have n resistors in series, you can just add them up. Uh, resistors in parallel, uh, what happens here is the current gets the current through the through this 
uh, assembly of resistors gets split into two parts uh, but what you must notice is the potential drop across both resistors because they have the same point here is the same um, same uh, follow the same uh, strategy here uh, you can uh, write that uh, the total current to this uh, setup here i equal to i1 plus i2 write i1 and i2 in terms of potential drop across the resistors like so and you can write the same equation here and equate the two to get 1 divided by r equal and equal to 1 divided by r1 plus 1 divided by r2 for n resistors this is going to go 1 divided by r1 plus 1 divided by r2 up to 1 divided by rn you can have capacitors in series um, like so so this is equivalent to this. Now you find what's the relationship between C equivalent and C1 and C2. Um, you can say that the charge in the two capacitors is the, is the same. Why? Because uh, if charge Q moves in, positive charge moves in, negative charge is to move out of here. And that negative charge will end up, same negative charge will end up here. And this, that negative charge will cause the same amount of positive charge to go out here, which means that the two charges through in the two capacitors is the same so we write that equation in terms of the capacitances and the voltage and individual capacitors um, that has to be the same the same charge has to have uh, go through here as well in the equivalent capacitor so we write the equation here um, and uh, we'll look at what the potential uh, uh, across the whole assembly is it, it is nothing but v1 plus v2 that should be the same potential across here because these two are equivalent so you can write these two equations equate the two and you can get your uh, formula for the equivalent capacitance 1 divided by c equivalent equal to 1 divided by c1 plus 1 divided by c2 and so on and so forth if you have n capacitors in series uh, capacitors in parallel as you guessed you just add them up why because uh, if charge q moves in here right here into this capacitor and charge q2 moves in here the sum of the two charges is equal to the total charge uh, one thing you must notice is the potential drop across the capacitors is the same so in the equivalent system you should have the same charge moving in and the potential drop across this uh, capacitor should be the same using those two facts i can write q the total charge moving in is equal to q1 plus q2 q1 here q2 here q1 is c1 times v which is the potential drop across the capacitor and q2 is c2 times c which is the potential drop across this capacitor and you can write the same equation for the equivalent system q is c equivalent times v and then you equate the two the two charges should be the same and then i can write c equivalent equal to c1 plus c2 and this works for n capacitors similarly you can derive the equations for uh, inductor as well which i won't do now let's look at uh, kirchhoff's voltage law that's the first law um, uh, that we we'll look at what the Kirchhoff's voltage law says is the sum of potential drop across a loop is zero so this is a loop what we do is uh, we assign a current uh, direction like so now you sum all the potentials now what happens here is if when you march along the direction of the current you encounter a potential source and you encounter the plus sign first then it is given uh, positive sign if you encounter negative sign first then it's given a negative uh, sign so in this case uh, this one becomes a plus this one becomes a minus and then you can sum up all the potentials here using that convention and the sum is equal to zero so I'll write VR which is the potential drop across the resistor V2 is this potential source you notice that we encountered plus first therefore this is plus VL is a potential drop across the inductor vc is the potential drop across the capacitor minus v1 y minus v1 because we hit the negative sign first that equal to zero that's kirchhoff voltage law norton's current law says uh, currents in a uh, in a node are uh, conserved what that means is uh, if you have a node like this and there are three branches here if i1 enters here and i2 and i3 leave i1 equal to i1 i2 plus i3 so currents are conserved so you can't have currents accumulating in the node that's as simple as i1 minus i2 minus i i3 equal to zero so currents entering are uh, denoted positive currents leaving the node are denoted 
negative so i1 minus i2 minus i3 equal to zero those are the basic um, laws and uh, law current laws that we're going to use and um, explanation of uh, circuit elements 